Hello and welcome back to another machine learning tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to be going through uh, implementing the k-nearest neighbors algorithm. But before we do that, I'm going to talk about exactly how it works, uh, like in mathematics. And uh, yeah, so if you guys are interested in learning about how this works, please watch the entire video. And then near the end is where I'm going to implement it because it won't take that long to implement it. But if you guys are more interested in the code, you can either go look at the text-based version at techwithtim.net, where I'm also going to have like descriptions of what's going on and all the code that I write. Or you can just skip forward into the video until when you see that I'm done drawing. I don't know how long this is going to take me to explain because uh, it is a bit more complicated than linear regression, but again, it's not that crazy difficult. Okay, so let's talk about the k nearest neighbors algorithm and how does this work? Well, as we already know, k nearest neighbors is a classification algorithm. And the way that it works is given a data point, so like so maybe something like this, it attempts to classify this data point um, with one of the classes that it knows. So in this case, our three classes would be, well, red, we have uh, green, and we have blue, okay? Now, obviously, uh, these would most likely represent something, uh, but for our cases, we're just gonna use colors because it's kind of easy to see. And this black is gonna be, well, our question mark because we don't know what class this is and we're trying to predict it. So the way that we predict this point, essentially, is we look for groupings of data points, right? So you can see and I'm just this is not what the algorithm does this is what we're kind of doing as uh humans okay we see kind of groups right so we see this group of red we see this group of blue we see this group of green and if i asked you well where does this black point belong most likely you would probably say red or blue right because it's closest to blue or red i, I would say it's closer to red and that is where you might say that this uh, belongs to you might say it belongs to red because well it's closest to that so it would make sense if it's a red color, right? Um, and that is exactly what our algorithm does. Now, it works a bit more advanced than this, but essentially it looks for kind of groupings of data points, right? And I'll show, I'll tell you how it works, but, uh, and then it will pick the closest point to uh, this black dot right here and say, okay, so it is gonna be that class. Now, what does this, this K mean? So I keep saying K nearest neighbors. Well, K is actually known as a hyperparameter, and it stands for the amount of neighbors that we are going to look for. So I'm just going to do an example with K equals three, okay, uh, and go through exactly what happens. So given our black uh, data point here, all right, and you know what, actually, let's just move it for the first example to be uh, kind of easier to understand. Okay, I'm just going to move it right here. If we have this parameter as k equals three, it means we are actually going to look for three neighbors to this black point. So we're going to find the three closest points out of all of this data um, to this black point. So I would argue that th those points would be probably these three points, right? Like the ones I just put the black dots on, okay? These three red points. Now, once it finds these three points, these points are going to have a vote. And essentially, our program is going to look at what class these points are. So you can see like this one's red, they're all red, um, and they're going to vote. Now, since these points are red, they're going to vote for red. So we're going to get a vote of red is three, green is zero, and blue is zero. Now, because red is the highest, highest occurrence, occurrence of that vote, uh, we are going to classify this point as being red. And that is essentially the way that it works. If I picked k equals five, well, we would look for the five closest data points. Now, uh, let's just, I know this might not be the closest point, but I just want to do it for example. Let's say we have that other red point, and let's say this blue point is close to this black dot. Maybe it's moved like over here, okay? What's going to happen now is the exact same thing. So we're going to look at these five data points that are the closest to this black dot, and we're going to say, well, okay, we have four red, so this is four. I should probably have just erased that instead of trying to write over it. And we have blue, which is one. Okay, so red four and blue one. And because, well, red is greater than one and is the highest occurrence, we're going to classify this point as red. And obviously, I think we would all say that is probably an appropriate classification. Okay, so that is essentially uh, how that works. Now let's go more into uh, some more detailed math, okay? So let's say I plot my data point here, okay? Uh, kind of in between two clusters of data. So again, how, how does this work, right? So um, actually, let's talk about why we're going to pick uh, an even value for k, or sorry, an odd value for k. So let's say k equals 5. Let's, let's do this example with k equals 5, and then we'll talk more about the math. So I would say the closest data points are probably this one, this one, this one, 
this one and you know what uh, I want to say it's this one as well okay so we have two uh, blue data points and three green data points now we see that we since we have three green and two blue we're gonna classify this as green but what if I said k equals four and instead of five so we'll cross that out k equals four well now uh, this data point I'm gonna scratch that out just assume that's not there now we have two green points and two blue points so how do we pick uh, which data point that we're going to classify this as well that is obviously why we need to pick k to be a odd number so one three five seven nine right so that no matter what we always have a winner and we can decide on a class because right now we don't know <laughs> which class this is because well we had a tie in terms of the voting okay so that's why we pick k to be a odd number all right, so now let's go into uh, the math. So how does it actually do this? What what are the mathematical methods? Well, um, you know what? Let's just actually scrap, or I don't know what I just did there. What the heck? Okay, can I undo that? Uh, okay, one second. How do you make this full screen? Exit out of that? There we go. Okay. Sorry, guys, don't know what I did there. So let's uh, scrap all this, and let's actually just talk about how we get distance. So remember we were saying here, like if this is our black data point and we had a maybe a green data point here and we had like another green data point here and another green data point here. Well, we could probably tell that this one's the closest, but the computer needs to do some math to determine this, right? And so how does it actually know uh, which point is closer to which point? Well, it's gonna draw a line from one point to the other point and it's going to find what's known as the magnitude of this line, okay? Uh, M, you could just say that's M, whatever. Any any value for the magnitude so how can we actually determine the magnitude of this line and then based on that what are we going to do with that so essentially let's just draw our data point again and let's call this p1 okay and in two space it's going to have coordinates of x1 and y1 now let's draw another point and let's just make it a little orange point here and let's call this data point uh, p2 okay it's going to have coordinates x2 and y2 so based on these values I'll just say it's a line here how do we find the magnitude of this line well there's a bunch of different ways that we can actually do this um, but the way that I'm gonna do it is called Euclidean distance now this is I believe the default one that our K nearest neighbor uses it's pr probably one of the simplest ones um, and all the other ones kind of work similarly to this so essentially Euclidean distance is the absolute distance from here to here and how do we get that? So we're going to say D, which stands for distance, so I could change this to D, okay, uh, is equal to the square root, all right, it's a big square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And this will apply, again, to any space coordinates. So if I have like an x, y, z coordinate, so maybe in three dimensions, uh, and we have another coordinate, you're gonna do the exact same thing, except what you'd add here is you'd add z2 minus z1 squared, okay? And you just continue the square root like that. But we don't need that portion because we're not in three space. So essentially what this is gonna do is will give us that absolute position. Now, if we wanna prove this on like some standard numbers, just to give you an idea, if we say like this is zero and this is zero, and we say this is zero and this is four, well, what is the distance here, right? What's the distance between x1, y1 to x2, y2? Well, we're just four away on the y-axis, so it should be four. So let's plug this into our formula and see if we get this. So we have x2 minus x1, well, that's zero squared, okay? Plus y2 minus y1, well, that, that's four. So we have four squared. So we can actually just cross out this zero and this plus, because, well, that's nothing. So we get the square root of four squared, which is equal to four. Or you could say it's equal to the root 16, which is equal to four, right? And that gives us the distance for our line. Uh, so wow, I just did a lot of math on here. Okay, so now that we know that, uh, we can find the distance between all of these different points here. Okay, I'm just trying to do that to show you where I'm actually uh, writing. And based on those distances, we can determine where, which the closest neighbors are. 
Okay, so let's do an example in three space to wrap it up and then let's implement our algorithm. So uh, I always draw my grids kind of weird for three space. Okay, so this is our three dimensional grid. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because obviously, well, we have like six attributes or six features that we're gonna be using to determine uh, our data points. And that means we have to plot them in three dimensions. So this is the exact same thing as two dimensions, except our data points are just gonna have three coordinates. So instead of X, Y, we're gonna have X, Y, Z, right? Um, and this is, I just want to show you how this works kind of in theory too. Okay. So again, we have points. Let's do one more points here and let's do our data point right maybe here. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to determine like what the X, Y value of these, this is X, Y value of this and X, Y value of this. And then we have to compare uh, based on how many neighbors we're looking for which point is which. Now this is where I want to get into that hyper parameter uh, of K. So what if I say K equals nine? So right now you would probably say that we want to classify this point as red because it's really close to the red data points. But if I put a value of K equals nine and we start looking for um, the closest points to, to K, well, we get these four, okay? But we also get like one, two, three, four, five. Let, let's imagine these move over a bit, okay? So what's happening now? Well, since we picked our K to be way too high, what's happening is we're now looking at points way outside of the range of our data point, right? And that means we've found these points over here and we've said that this is going to be belonging to the purple group because, well, we pick too many values for K. So this is just showing you an error that you can run into if you pick too many values. Okay. So I think that is almost about it for, uh, what do you call it? All this stuff. I think the last thing I'm going to talk about is just some limitations to this algorithm. And then maybe in the next video, we're going to implement it because it won't take very long. And I realize I'm already at 11 minutes, but I needed to explain this to you guys. Okay. So some limitations. Well, you may have already noticed that saving this model is not going to do anything for us, meaning that, uh, like it is very computationally heavy. So right now I'm only doing, uh, I don't know if, uh, what is five, 10, 14 data points and 15, if you include this one. Okay. And every time that I want to classify this point, I actually have to find the distance between this point and every other point, right? I have to, I have to figure out what the distance is between every other data point that exists on this grid. Now, this doesn't seem like a lot when you're only doing it 14 times, but you can imagine that computation on tens of thousands of data points takes a long time. And the reason we have to do that is because we have to know the distance to every data point so we can figure out which ones are the closest to our point, right? So um, when we save this model, like you can save it if you want to, but essentially it has to save every single piece of training data that we've given it, every single piece, because it has to look at every single data point every time we make a prediction. And that means our predictions take a long time. Um, and this algorithm is essentially, uh, it's useless to train beforehand because it has to constantly keep looking at every data point before it can make a prediction on um, whatever data point we give it. So that means that our time is going up linearly rather than being constant, um, which would be, uh, what do you call it? Constant is an example of like linear regression where it doesn't matter uh, how many times we try to predict using our model since we just created a function, we can just use that function, right? And it takes constant time, okay? So I think I'm going to wrap the video up here. As always, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave one in the comment down below and I'll try to help you out as best as I can. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and I will see you again in another one.